Hello and welcome to another Worth Electronic ISIS webinar. My name is Eleni Stark and I will moderate this webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our webinar. The topic of today's webinar is making your industrial device IoT compatible with Wi-Fi. Our speaker today is our support engineer Manfred Schaumatz. He will hold today's webinar and also answer your questions. Before we start the webinar, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during this webinar today. This means that you can't ask us questions via microphone during the webinar. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us questions during the webinar at any time via our chat function. You'll find the chat function in the webinar control panel. The webinar will be about 30 minutes long. The chat questions will then be answered in a question-answer session following the webinar. There are 15 minutes in addition scheduled for this. If we are unable to answer all your questions within these 15 minutes, please email us at isis-webinar at we-online.com. We will try to answer all questions promptly. At the end of the webinar, you'll be asked to participate in a feedback survey. We would be pleased if you take the time to fill out the survey and help us to improve our webinars. The link to the recording of today's webinar, as well as the presentation, will be sent to you in a separate email several days after the webinar. You can also watch the recording of today's webinar one day or a few days later on our website under the navigation point webinars or also on our Worth Electronic YouTube channel. Now I'm happy to hand over to our speaker Manfred Chamatz and I wish you an exciting webinar. Yes, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you Eleni for the welcoming words. And I'd like to welcome all the participants this afternoon with our webinar for the topic making your industrial device IoT compatible with Wi-Fi. Yeah, an interesting topic that we've been thinking about how could we formulate it. The two concepts here are IoT and Wi-Fi and we'd like to discuss both of them, uh, although IoT has been discussed in many forums, but in combination with our Wi-Fi solution we hope to give you some new thoughts and ideas. Before I carry on, I have next to me sitting uh, our Wi-Fi specialist Adi who will be doing uh, answering the chats and the questions on the chat forum. So you're welcome to post any question on the chat as well. He'll do that in the meantime. And if I'm lucky, I can maybe pull him in on one or two audio questions in between as well. All right, let's have a look. What are we going to talk about today? We have here the overview. What is IoT? We want to discuss it a little bit and to build a sort of foundation of what we can build on. We'd like to have a look at some typical I.O. applications, Wi-Fi for IoT, and then there's an interesting topic, MQTT. More about that later on. Then you'll see the Calypso highlights. The Calypsos are our solution for this Wi-Fi interfacing. The Calypso modules you'll see on the right-hand side here, um, it obviously has a very few has a number of interesting features amongst other the AT command interface, the optional provisioning, security features, and many many others. More about that later on. Right, and we'll summar, summarize all of this a little bit at the end. Let's get going and see what do you understand under the topic of IoT? Is it well the daily environment we live in, the industry, the buildings, the outdoor, our vehicles, aircraft, bridges, and air generation. Many of these devices all would like to be part of the big thing of internet, or the big internet. Would it also be on the other hand, maybe the industrial application? And I think this is where we'd like to place some accent as well. Temperature, volume, pressure, uh, actuators, actuators and actuation out of the industry. Or could it be an industrial application? There are many, many environments that I can think of where the term IoT comes to play. Also, our home environment, our daily home environment from the washing machine to the fridge, 
lighting and door and security in our home environment. And lastly, and not least, our daily environment where we play around with our smartphone and our tablet trying to get into this big thing called the internet. But if we want to connect this, what would be the solution? IoT is connecting anything to the internet and further down to further things. So everything daily which you can think of um, makes use of the internet in a very big and large scale nowadays. Each of the above mentioned tasks requires sensors, actuators to interact with the environment, a wireless connectivity method, a gateway to collect the data and a cloud to perform the store and store the data and a user interface to enable human interaction. Right, there's a lot of, lot of phrases which I've coined. Uh, let's take it step by step. A typical IoT application. Um, out of the industrial environment, I can immediately think of a number of applications. Robotics, manufacturing, autonomous vehicles, which, or which are very difficult to tie to the internet over the last few meters. We always would like them to be mobile, or many of them like to be mobile, but nevertheless still get the data flowing in both directions. In our industrial application here we have the robots that are controlled by PLCs, program programmable logic controllers, who in turn would then nowadays very often provide all of this data from the sensors higher up into the cloud or the other way around we'd like to send data down to the manipulators of the robots. We try to summarize this a little bit to build a picture of what we want to do and we're getting closer to it. Um, we built a little imaginary stack and this was uh, part of uh, Adi's idea as well. If you look at the left hand side here we start off at the bottom with the sensors and actuators. This is the hardware or the hardware components usually uh, reliant on very low power uh, because of battery operation invariably and low data volumes. All of this needs to be connected via some other wireless connectivity system, um, also with low power and a medium bandwidth. But uh, I think this is what we're going to concentrate about because the solution here is given by our Calypso module. And then we go higher up, we build a bridge to get all of this into a gateway, the bridge to the internet. Um, via local command and control. Then we go higher up to a data platform where we process all of this data. We build averages, we analyze and we present. And then finally right at the top here, the user application whereby we would like to be flexible and have all this data available over laptops and smartphones or other display interfaces, mediums. But I hope to have given a bit of an overview. If we tie this all together, we have here in the middle our sensors and actuators, which over some radio link, Wi-Fi in this case, are connected to a gateway and high up to the cloud and wherever we want to talk, a laptop, smartphone, or even an audio interface. This brings me to the very next topic, why Wi-Fi? Um, yes, have you given that some thought? Look at the left uh, little image here, all providing. Uh, you probably all know the basic needs of Maslow. Maslow defined the basic human needs in a little hierarchical triangle, starting with physiological safety and belonging, then higher up the esteem and self-esteem and self-image. But uh, we uh, allowed ourselves to modify this a little bit and we added a further level, the Wi-Fi, yeah, uh, typical real life. Whenever my nephews come and visit me, the first thing they ask me is, could I have your Wi-Fi password? And thereafter they ask questions about my safe being, my well-being and maybe something to drink and eat. I think definitely Maslow needs to improve here. So we added the level of uh, Wi-Fi at the bottom here. That's a little bit tongue of cheek, a little joke. What else is important? Wi-Fi is international at standard compliant. 
developed by the IEEE, the International Electrical Engineering Association, which developed the 802.11 norm. And this works worldwide. That is one of the topics. Keep that in mind. We want IP connectivity, the picture on the right, and then the frequency on the uh, space we use is typically the unlicensed spectrum, which is the 2.4 uh, megahertz spectrum, often nowadays very cluttered, but it serves a very good and uh, useful purpose, and that's where we're going to work with. Our module also works on the 2.4 uh, range. Right, let's have a look. The range versus power versus throughput. There are three terms here, uh, which obviously always are a compromise. In our home, from our gateway, uh, we invariably have a good throughput the closer we are to the access point, the further away uh, we need either more power or the throughput is uh, less. So there's a bit of compromise here and that brings me to the very next slide here. Wi-Fi for IoT. And I have here a graph, this stage is empty, but throughput is the one element versus consumption and we could add a third dimension, dimension here and actually call that um, uh, range. So there are many elements, uh, elements important to the Wi-Fi. On the right hand top you see the yellow marking here which is the 802.11 AC which is what we use at home as well. Usually a very high throughput, the higher the better, but at a cost of power and current consumption. In between a little bit lower we have the LTE cellular applications and down at the bottom we have typical applications like Bluetooth in Ocean and other Zigbee proprietary protocols, the sub-1 gig, sub gigahertz bands. Where do we fit in? This is where we'd like to fit in. Somewhere in the middle here, a compromise between the uh, very high speed, high volume Wi-Fi connections and the Internet of Things, whereby temperature or pressure sensors don't have vast volumes of information but they need to be reliable. And for this matter, take note, we've got the 802.11 B, G and N modes here. And you'll see for the first time here a little picture of our Calypso module. This is the module that needs to solve this little problem for you. Thinking back about our introduction here, IoT application design using Calypso and I'd like to go back to this little image of mine in the beginning again. Um, our Calypso hopefully will solve the problem here from our machine to the cloud or the internet and I'll try to summarize it a little bit in a different fashion. On the very right hand side we have our sensors and actuators. Industrial application, either a fridge or a coffee machine or a big industrial application with a valve or a temperature monitor. All connected to a microcontroller, or ASIC or whatever intelligent system you have, which would communicate to our UART, the Wi-Fi uh, wi Calypso module over UART, which we have at the bottom here. And in essence what would happen here is over our Calypso we would take care of many things like the physical and the medium access control which is a Wi-Fi level uh, 802.11 BGN at 2.4 gigahertz. We have the concepts of TCP IP, uh, IPv4 and IPv6 all being handled by our module and now we have a new term here MQTT client and MQTT server. Um, a little bit more about this shortly. Right, here is a slide for our MQTT, the Message Queuing Telemetry Transport System. And all of this is housed in a, uh, well, either on the one side on our Calypso, or on the other hand, the broker part would be handled by the gateway higher up. Now MQTT is a lightweight application layer protocol based on a publish subscribe messaging mes mechanism because you need some firmware to actually handle the communication from your 
uh, IoT process high up through a gateway. This protocol was designed for resource constrained un and unreliable networks with limited bandwidth and high latency. These characteristics make MQTT suitable for low power, low bandwidth IoT apl applications and inherently the MQTT protocol offers some degree of assurance and delivery thereby offering a robustness uh, for machine to machine communication. And maybe one last thought here, MQTT was originally de developed by IBM and the version 3.1.1 is an OASIS standard that is open and royalty free. Um, right, a lot of thoughts and ideas here. The MQTT broker would simply handle in this event or in this case our data from uh, either from a monitor or from a sensor and it could then be looked at from our smartphone or tablet. Now all of these devices would communicate either by publishing a topic or data and subscribing to the very same data from the opposite side. Um, a lot of terms and technologies here. Publish and subscription mechanism. Um, this firmware runs on top of the TCP TLS labels or layers. Uh, it is very suitable for low power and low bandwidth applications and obviously used extensively for M2M application and IoT applications. The Calypso implements all of these. I think enough said there. Um, Calypso highlights, maybe just as a brief summary, summary here, uh, four thoughts. In order to achieve all of this firmware connection uh, over the Ethernet or over uh, radio, our module here actually has a very easy hardware integration mechanism with an edge, edge castellated connection, a smart antenna selection, you could select an internal or an external antenna connection. Very important here is the connection to existing networks and the Wi-Fi being worldwide is one of the most commonly used wireless connectivity technologies. Then we have a term provisioning into the network. Any device or development needs to be configured to connect to the local network. The Calypso offers a provisioning mode which allows the use to connect via a smartphone or tablet and configure the device via web pages running on our board. So HTTP type protocol. Then also we have further topics like easy software integration, low power operation and security. Maybe a little bit about the security in the next slides. Um, I've mentioned here the topic of uh, provisioning. I'd like to elaborate a little bit about this here and maybe our specialist Adi could uh, give me some idea of how to handle it. Would you, Adi, would like to give a little bit of input on the topic of provisioning? Uh, yes, Manfred. Uh, just earlier you mentioned that uh, when your nephews come home, they ask for your Wi-Fi password. That's a really interesting uh, example to uh, describe what provisioning actually is. So when your nephew wants to uh, connect his smartphone uh, to your uh, Wi-Fi network, he usually selects the SSID from your from his on his smartphone and then types in the password that you given. Now let's okay. say for example mm -hmm. you have to connect a toaster or a coffee machine in your kitchen to the Wi-Fi network. Typically such devices are very common in industrial environment and uh, they do not have an input method for example a keyboard or a mouse or uh, even a touch screen for that matter. So in this case it is really difficult to actually configure the device to connect to the available Wi-Fi network. This is where provisioning comes into picture and uh, on Calypso we have uh, HTTP based web pages that run on the module and the module switches itself into provisioning mode thereby enabling easy provisioning. Yeah. I think you have, we can show it with a couple of pictures later. In, okay, in coming, up, uh, coming up shortly some more slides and pictures. You've actually mentioned it as well. The next slide which I'd like, or on the right hand side here, you'll see this um, little picture of our AT command tool. Now this is a tool which we have written and Adi has largely been involved with that 
to actually allow us to develop to develop and work with our Calypso module. And this is a tool which combines and puts together into one easy handling tool all the uh, possible IT commands which we need to talk and set up and configure and uh, work with our uh, Calypso module. Let's have a look at the very next slide here. Just to mention one example here. Um, before we want to connect to a gateway or somewhere, we need to know what is available in the vicinity. And one of the examples here would be to use the WLAN scan or the Wi-Fi scan option, which you'll see on the right here. These are simply no more than a few IT commands, which this tool would then uh, configure correctly and talk to our module, the Calypso, to actually scan the available uh, networks or gateways in the area which I could connect to. And this would then be the list of all the uh, gateways available. I could select one of those and according to the IP address do the um, setup for this module to connect into the uh, internet. Let's have a look at a maybe more detailed uh, application. You'll see that at the bottom of this IT command tool there are a number of options and possibilities including provisioning. Let's go to the next slide and take a practical example. Here we have a coffee machine which is internet or which has internet possibilities and if we'd like to connect, to connect that to the internet and otherwise to possibly get uh, information on temperatures or levels or remaining number of coffee, uh, cups of coffee. Obviously our coffee machine will not have a keyboard or a big monitor um, as such or a mouse connected to it. And here the term provisioning comes into play. So once designed into the system you would simply go into provisioning and then you could take any HTTP uh, device like a tablet in this case do the setup for the environment you'd like to connect to and thereafter your coffee machine would be visible to the whole of the world obviously provided you have the correct passwords if necessary it all depends on the setup right we see on the left hand side here bringing the device into the existing wi-fi network in field device configuration you can do that in field on site uh, access point mode host triggered pin command and from host and we have a web interface platform independence. You could take any uh, HTTP compatible device to actually then do the commissioning of the Calypso. Yes, uh, there is very oh, a very important topic which I haven't mentioned yet and we haven't discussed yet. With all our Wi-Fi applications and even our Internet of Things the topic of security is becoming more and more important and I put in a little slide here just to point out some ideas and thoughts here. Uh, advanced security features like uh, uh, up to six simultaneous secure sockets are available. We have a secure boot function and option, uh, secure storage on our module and secure OTA over the air updating is also provided. Um, we also have a good basis for a secure end product, right? Therefore also, yes, trusted root certificate catalogs can be stored. Um, we have the option of encryption file systems. I've mentioned OTA. And we further have also a hardware accelerated crypto engine on the machine. We have software tamper detection and even cloning protection on our module. Um, the SSL or TLS layer provides added security features like server authentication and end-to-end -end encryption. So really powerful option all available on this module of ours. In the meantime, uh, keep posting your questions. I see one or two questions are coming in already. You can certainly ask any specific questions. We are getting closer to the end. And I'm just trying to look at the questions in the meantime here. Um, yes, one of the questions I see here, let me throw that in, is what do you mean by software tamper detection is one of the questions since we just had the 
question here. Adi, maybe you can tell me more about software de uh, tamper detection. Uh, um, yes, Manfred. Uh, what we have built in uh, into a Calypso module uh, is a secure bootloader. What this bootloader does in the uh, in principle in, in, uh, basically is that it checks for the signature of every image that is to be loaded on the module. For example, if the image is from us, or that is if the firmware is written by us and signed by uh, us, only then the module allows the application to boot on the module and any malware, for example, uh, a software with, uh, written by somebody else, uh, if it is tried to be uh, run on the module, it is not allowed. So this is basically okay. the built-in software tamper-proof mechanism. Yes, okay, lovely. Um, maybe one more uh, item here. Uh, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll post that question a little bit later. One second. Let's carry on to the next slide and see. All of this gives you a good basis then uh, to actually work with a IoT demo using our Calypso. And here we put together a little prototype of an industrial application and we don't have many more slides because I see the time is uh, going on. We'd like to stick within half an hour to summarize and build all of this into a short picture. We built up a little prototype for an industrial application. The setup consists of a Wi-Fi network simulating a smart home network with an access point and a DHCP server. The Raspberry Pi you see at the top here uh, the Calypso and the smartphone are connected to this network and the MQTT broker runs on the Raspberry Pi while MQTT clients run on the smartphone and Calypso. With this configuration data exchange can take place between the smartphone and the Calypso over the Raspberry Pi. The cloud platform, um, have a look, uh, you'll see the term at the top here, the mosquito. Let me just show that. That is this little piece of firmware running on the Raspberry Pi here. We use that to take care of our MQTT. It is an open source lightweight message broker that implements MQTT protocol version 3.1 and 3.1.1. Um, it's part of the Eclipse Foundation and uh, it is an open source and uh, yeah, freeware. You can simply use and download that as well. We use this to build up our little application here to actually simulate our environment. And what we do here is send some simulated sensor data through our Calypso module to the Raspberry Pi. And we can have a look at it on our, in this case, uh, smartphone. And we can actually send data back in the opposite direction as well. Right, now our little picture comes together. Our, on the left hand side, the little robot connected to the cloud. This is what we tried to simulate and point out here. Before we end, there's one, more, one last more slide I'd like to display just to give you an overview of all the possibilities of the Calypso and its features. Just a brief summary. It is based on the IEEE 802.11 BGN. Um, Wi-Fi modes available are Wi-Fi Station as well as Wi-Fi Direct. You could check up a little bit more on that as well. We did not delve into depth there. It can handle TCP IP with IP4 as well as IPv6. And then we discussed the advanced security features, uh, the onboard provisioning actually to allow you to build it or connect it to the internet somewhere in the field. We have a very extensive AT command interface. And last but not least, the UART board rate, which is very high here, 921.6 uh, kilobits per second with the uh, 8E1 or 8 even 1 parity bit. Um, but that's all in the documentation. Right, uh, Adi, I think we've summed it up in just about half an hour here, but we'll stay online and uh, look at the questions and see where we can answer some more of these questions here. Before we do that, I would actually just go to the last slide here and in the meantime, thank you for your attention. We hope to have given you a brief but intensive overview of what the Calypso can do and where you can implement it. 
With the one eye, I've been watching the GoToWebinar uh, service provider, provider on the right hand side, the questions. And one of the questions here is, uh, yes, what other modes does Calypso support? Uh, maybe, Adi, you'd like to just give us some input there? Uh, I believe uh, the user is here asking the question regarding the Wi-Fi modes and uh, um, yes, Calypso uh, can also act as an access point in addition to being a station and uh, in the Wi-Fi direct modes you have both the group owner as well as the standard client modes. But as an access point, uh, the design here is that the Calypso be used uh, uh, as uh, for configuration, provisioning and over the air updates. Uh, it can support a maximum of four stations but it, it doesn't have the capabilities like your standard uh, off-the-shelf router, routers like Fritzbox or something because mm -hmm. it is a low-power device with uh, limited capabilities of course. Yeah. Okay, Ari, Ari, thank you very much for the very, very technical description here. <laughs> um, I've in the meantime just gone on one little slide further here. Uh, we'll be standing by to answer your questions via the webinar tool. Don't hesitate to ask. Uh, invariably, this is a stage where all the questions do come in. Uh, I'll hold the display on this side. If you don't have any f further questions, then I uh, wish you a good afternoon. But all of those who'd like to just stay on hold and to listen in, we will certainly still be on for a number of questions and answers here. I'm checking one more here. Um, Yes, one of the questions here, is the module certified? As far as I know, yes, it is RED compliant or CE compliant. It has the RED certification. And I believe FCC certification is to follow very soon. And maybe, Adi, what would you like to mention? Is there anything else I've forgotten here? Uh, maybe it is interesting to know that the module is uh, also Wi-Fi. Alliance Wi-Fi certified, which ah, yes. means that uh, it offers uh, compatibility or interoperability with all the Wi-Fi certified devices with hundreds of routers that are already existing in the market. Okay, well, lovely, thanks. Um, I'm checking the questions here. Maybe I'd like to share one or two with you. Um, does the module support only MQTT? Uh, why does DDS or AMQP uh, what is it special or what is special about MQTT? Um, obviously, as far as I know, you can use any provider, but maybe Adi? Uh, yes, uh, Calypso basically offers uh, at the transport layer, the TCP and the TLS protocols. All the additional application layer protocols are in, uh, so uh, basically run on top of the, uh, the layer, so uh, the user is free to implement uh, such protocols on his host. Okay. We chose MQTT because it is popularly used and especially in case of IoT and is also kind of uh, supported by most of the available cloud plat platforms like Azure or, or Amazon or, or uh, Google Cloud uh, and uh, that is why we chose uh, MQTT. So that is, uh, that is what is special about MQTT. Okay, Adi, thank you very much for the answer there. Going down the questions here, maybe here's one more I'd like to share with you. Do you have an evaluation board for the Calypso? Uh, yes, we certainly do have an evaluation board. Just contact one of our field sales engineers or check our homepage, our website, um, or drop us a mail or even ask a question here. Certainly the, this, this evaluation board is available and also all necessary tools and software will be made, uh, will be made available soon. If there is anything special requ you require, just contact us. We'd certainly like to help you to put together your IoT environment. Yes, there's one more question I'd like to just quickly share with you as well. Uh, does the solution compare to BLE? Yes, Adi? Uh, I believe the user is uh, asking here for the comparison uh, between uh, a Bluetooth low energy solution and a Wi-Fi solution. Uh, out of the top of my mind, what comes to me is uh, the IP connectivity part of it. So you have an MQTT application running on top of TCP IP and with this you can directly talk 
to a cloud server that is running MQTT server. So there is direct IP connectivity. However, yes, yes. in case of Bluetooth Low Energy, mm -hmm. uh, there has to be a gateway in between that can yes, talk yes, yes. Bluetooth Low Energy and then convert the messages into IP platform. So that is on top of my mind. Mm -hmm. There are several other dif differences. For example, the range is not really, I mean, uh, it is 802.11 PGN compatible and Bluetooth low energy, they run different physical layer standards yes, yes. And, and so on and so forth. So you can uh, go on with the list here. So okay. that's briefly what is on yes. top of mind. Well, certainly to summarize, maybe the most important difference here is the fact that the uh, Calypso or the MQTT allows you direct inter inter uh, interfacing to the uh, web, the big internet. Whereas with the BLE, you would need some more interfacing and a gateway to take care of this for you. Uh, they actually work on the same frequency, 2.4 gigahertz, but then also the range might be an issue. Um, yes, let's have a look. There's one more question here as well. Uh, yeah, regarding TLS, does the module provide a way to authenticate itself? with a certificate on the MQTT broker. This is Adi's speciality, Adi. <laughs> yes, uh, for sure. Uh, the module has, uh, as uh, uh, Manfred referred to in his presentation, uh, a place or a secure storage where we can save the certificates. And certainly these certificates can then be used uh, uh, to reference to in uh, in AT commands that then mm -hmm. uh, enable authentication with the server, with the MQTT broker. On the other hand, if you're running a TLS server, uh, you always have to have a certificate running and also be able to authenticate in both directions, client authentication as well as server authentication, which is both possible using Calypso. Yes, okay. Uh, I would also like to add that there is an onboard root certificate catalog which then allows you to authenticate most commonly uh, available root certificate agencies, uh, so-called root CAs uh, okay. on board. So uh, there are built-in really advanced security features that can be used in this case. Yes, okay. Uh, Adi, thank you very much today. Um, we've been checking the questions and answers here. Um, yes, what else is of interest? What else could I share with you? Let me just check quickly, hold the line. Um, yes, there was one interesting one which came in earlier somewhere. Uh, the question is, how do I connect my actual temperature sensor to the Calypso? Um, in fact, you would not connect them directly. You would need some host microcontroller or ASIC or whatever intelligent system just to read and measure the temperature sensor and then via UART, pass this information on to the Calypso and the Calypso would take and handle all the communication into the internet via MQTT or whatever else you wish then to make it available on the Wi-Fi platform or internet. Um, yes. I think that's too good in terms of the actual sensor. You, the sensor and actuator, you need a bit of uh, driving electronics in between. Yes, Adi, what else do we have in terms of questions and answers? Yeah, okay, how many internal memory or how much internal memory is available for the web server? Um, yes, in terms of memory size and available memory. Um, um, I would like to say that somewhere between uh, half a megabyte and one megabyte of uh, memory is available for uh, user files. Uh, um, the module itself has a 4 megabyte flash chip on uh, and also a secure file system that is encrypted on the uh, on board but uh, there are of course system files and certificates and uh, other uh, files used by the application itself on board so i would say around a, a maximum of 1 megabyte which allows for basic web pages to run on the module for uh, high level uh, configuration then uh, uh, the websites the website itself have to be hosted on the host microcontroller itself yes yes so obviously this is a system designed for iot and not for video streaming so keep that in mind maybe just a little bit of additional information here we have 
implement it on our system in the CC3220, you can find the information on there, which runs a Cortex-M4 core at 80 megahertz, and on there there is a Wi-Fi network processor subsystem, and uh, we have all the security features, and yeah, so much a bit of technicality, temperature ranges and so on. Um, Right, we're operating in the 2.4 gigahertz uh, license-free band here. Let's have a look. Here's one more interesting. Um, yeah, is it possible to customize the provisioning web page? Yes, Adi, I, I see a thumbs up here. Um, yeah, uh, Adi, would you like to ex uh, explore on that or? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, it is definitely possible to customize uh, the provisioning web page. Okay. Of course, uh, I would like to recommend. I would recommend you to contact uh, the the closest field sales engineer closest to you to get yeah, more information on this. Sure. Thing. Obviously, we will certainly like to provide you with the assistance here. Contact one of the field sales engineers or contact us directly here, or send me an email, and we can always talk about. Uh, giving you certain support or possible development assistance, uh, the possibilities are uh, vast and obviously whenever and if we can solve a problem for you, we would certainly like to help you in your application. Right, there's some minor questions here. Um, I think uh, whatever is left over, we would like to actually then uh, handle by email. Uh, you will answer all of the remaining short questions that sound by email, otherwise you're welcome to send us an email as well. At this stage my video is still on hold. I'm going to call it a day here. I would like to thank Ali very, very much for his assistance and answering all the questions and then also for the technical support in the background and for Eleni who did the announcement at the beginning. All of you I thank you very much for the participation and for the assistance and I wish you a good day. Till next time. Bye-bye.